What's up YouTube? In this video, I'm going to take you through an updated version of a video I did about a week ago. So if you haven't seen that video, it is called I Built the Ultimate Free AI SEO Tool, 10,000 AI Blogs in One Click. And it's had nearly 2,000 views in a week, which is amazing because my videos don't get many views relative to many other YouTubers in this space. But if we scroll down a bit, you can see a subscriber has posted a comment here and it says, thanks for giving out the free tool, but I have a request. Can you rewrite the code so that we can load our own keywords into the code, either via a Google Sheet or a copy and paste? Thank you. So I think this is an awesome idea and I do like to help out subscribers and viewers when I can. So great idea. And that's exactly what I've done. So you'll see on this updated process, the first step is now we're going to update a Excel spreadsheet with all the variables that exist within the Python script. The next step is then we will use the Python script to generate all of our content based on the variables we provided in the, in the Excel sheet. And then that content will get placed into a special folder that we set up and I'll show you how to do that. And then from that folder, this process here is listening to, to that folder. And when new content appears there, it will post it into our CMS. And the CMS in this video is going to be Webflow. So if any of the stuff I show you in this video doesn't make complete sense, I'd suggest go back and watch the video from last week. If you didn't see it, I will put a link somewhere either above or at the end or somewhere. And hopefully that'll clarify anything because this is going to be a bit quicker in, in the video today. So what are we going to get at the end of this one? Well, you're going to get a site that looks a bit like this or for whatever it is in your niche. So you get an amazing image, you get the title and there's the content. Now we could do this for every major city or every city on the planet in, in just a click once we're set up. So let's get into it. Alrighty. So first things first, first thing you're going to need is Visual Studio Code. If you don't have it, head to code.visualstudio.com forward slash download and grab it for your operating system. Next, same again, you need Python. If you haven't got Python, head to python.org and grab it for your operating system. Next, we need the script. So to get the script, head to this website here. It's the Ambitious Hub. There'll be a link in the description. And if you scroll down a bit on the first page, this is the one you're looking for here. Custom Variable Import Programmatic Auto Blog. So click on this one. Then it brings you to this page here. And all you need to do is click on this and it's going to take you to Bitbucket. So when you land over in Bitbucket, it's going to have everything you need. So the first thing I want you to take note of is the readme file. If you get stuck after this video trying to set it up, this is what you want to refer back to. The main issues that I see are that the modules have not been installed. So make sure you've done them. And the other one is just pressing save on your .py file so that Visual Studio knows that it's been updated. Otherwise, it just doesn't do anything. Alrighty. So just before we leave Bitbucket, there's a couple of things I need you to download. So head over to the downloads when you click on this you're going to see a couple of files. You need this file, this deja vu.ttf file, and you need this one data.xlsx. Download both of those files, and we can then jump over to Visual Studio. Now, I've just opened up Visual Studio code here. I've got this file here called auto.py. I created this, basically you just go to this little icon here. You probably won't have anything else in your folder at all. But just go to where it says new file, click on that, give it a name. I'd suggest using auto.py because that's what the instructions in the readme file refer to. And then hit enter. You'll have a blank screen here. And all you need to do is go to Bitbucket. When you're back in Bitbucket, click on the source there and then click on this one here. Now you'll notice the naming convention. If you saw the previous video, this makes or has some meaning to it. You've got AI. It's going to generate a text file. It's also going to generate a PDF. It's going to use Excel for the variables and it's going to generate the content in a methodical sequence. So let's just click on this file here. All you need to do is copy all of this code. Once you've done that, we'll head back to Visual Studio, paste it in here and you are done. Press save. That's the most important thing. Go to file, press save. Otherwise, it doesn't acknowledge that the file's been changed. Next thing, just make sure you download it and drop these two files into your folder here. So we've got this deja vu.ttf, which I mentioned, and also also the data.xlsx. 
Now, this is the one we are going to update our variables in. So let's go and have a look at the Excel file and we'll see how we update that. Okay, so I've just opened up the Excel file here and I'm going to take you through it and hopefully I can um, make it nice and clear. But if you've got any questions on this one, just drop them in, in the comments. So I've got restaurants, hotels, museums, bars, cafes. These are like places you might go in a city. These are all the cities I've listed here. I've got about 50 of them, something like that. And the third variable here, I've got you know the type of travel. So families, business travelers, art lovers, couples, or whatever. The fourth column, we've got the open AI model. So this one is going to use GPT 3.5 Turbo. You could change this to you know, GPT uh, 4 or whatever you like. It doesn't matter um, as long as it's a valid model. Column E here, this is the prompt. If I click in here and just go up the top, you can see here, this is the full prompt. Now, this is where you can change this prompt. This one in particular, it is going to generate an article that is written by an SEO content writing expert in English for about a thousand words. So you can check that out yourself. If you have an, another prompt for your specific need, this is where you change it now rather than the code. Column F. G and H, this is where we construct our string. So you can see what's happening here. And this is a, a sample title that's based on the on the data vented in here. So the first one it's going to generate is the best, which is coming from here, restaurants, which is coming from here, in New York, this is New York, USA, for families. So you can see now that by modifying your variables and your sentence structure, you can come up with whatever type of programmatic title that you're after. Now at the moment, this count is set to one and you'll see when you click in here, you do get a warning. The count must be you know, greater than or equal to one, but it's got to be less than the max iteration count. So the max iteration count is shown here. And I've just created a little formula here that will calculate the number of unique articles and or titles and articles that this can generate. So at the moment, just with this bit of data here, by the time that it runs through each of these combinations, there will be three and a half thousand articles. So I've defaulted this to one. When you're all ready to go, if you want to generate every single article, what you would do is enter 3,500 in here and away you go. Now note, if you put in 4,000, yep, you get an error. So don't try to put in a value higher than the max. And similarly, if you put in zero, you get a warning as well. Just the basic stuff here. It all makes sense. So I'm going to set this to one because this is a demo and I do not need to generate three and a half thousand articles about where to eat in nice cities. All right, let's move on to the next step. All right, with that all done, we can basically start generating some content. Just before you do go and generate your content, make sure you've had a look at that readme file again and you've installed all the modules. You've pressed save. You've got these other files that I've mentioned. The latest one is this data.xls one. That's the one we've just updated. So with all of that done, you should be good to go. So just open up the terminal, go to terminal, new terminal, and we'll get the terminal. Now you might notice here, I actually called this project initially Google Sheets. The reason we're not using Google Sheets is because to authenticate with Google from within Python, it gets a little bit complicated. Not that we can't do it, but I'm just trying to keep it really simple so that you can actually go away and hopefully use this and get some value out of it. With all of that said, we are good to go. So to run it, all you need to do is just type in Python and I've called the, the script file name auto.py. So we'll do that. Python auto.py and hit run. Just a quick interruption here. If you do get stuck and you do need a bit of extra help, just first port of call, head over to the channel, scroll down a bit on the main page here, and there is a bunch of SEO Python videos. So just check those out. A couple of these go into the setup of Python in a, in a really a lot of detail. So if you get, get stuck, head there. Alternatively, what you can do is head back to the ambitious hub where you can get all the Python code. And there is a button at the top that says book a call. You can book a call and I can maybe take you through and help resolve your issue. So our file has generated. If we want to take a look at the text file, we can in here. We can't look at the PDF without open that in a viewer, but it's the same stuff just in PDF format. So here is our text file. This looks pretty good, but it's a bit tricky to read within Visual Studio. So I'm just going to open it up in Google Doc. And here is our article. So 
if we had put in our spreadsheet 3,500, we would have got 3,500 of this article using GPT 3.5 and all of the other variables that we set. Next thing we need to do is set up our folder to drop our generated content into. So this next bit's really easy. All you need to do is set up a shared Google Drive folder. Now, it's going to be shared with anyone with a link. And the important thing is when it's shared, you're going to know it is because it's going to have this, these little icons here. It says shared and you also see the same little icon here. So when you generate your content, it's going to produce that content into the folder where all your Python and your Visual Studio code set up. When it generates the articles, just drop them, drag and drop them over into your Google Drive. So if you've done 100, put them in here. If you've done 2,000, drop them into here. When you've done that, now we can go and set up the integration that's going to move it directly into our CMS. Alrighty, so just before we get into the integration tool, just to give some context of where the content is being posted. In the previous video, we set up this Webflow CMS site. It's clonable, so it's totally free and very quick and easy to get set up. So if you'd like to check that out, have a look in the previous video. But once this is set up, we can just go into the editor. This is our site. And if we want to look at the CMS, we just go to the database here and we're going to blog posts. And you can see I'm just kicking off from where we left off last time. And what will happen now is when we run the integration, we'll have our new content coming through into here. But I've made some minor updates that he's going to save a lot of time and a lot of hassle. So the integration tool is Make, and I've gone through this in, again, a lot of detail in the previous video. So if you get stuck on this part, go and have a look at that video, because in this one, it's going to be the summary version. So first of all, we've got the Google Drive. This is watching for files that land in that folder. The next step is we're going to get that file. Next step is we convert our Markdown file because the Python script generates all the content in Markdown format and Webflow needs everything in HTML so it comes out formatted correctly. Now, the next two steps, these are new. And what this does is basically it removes the underscore and the .txt out of the files that was a bit of a pain in the last process. So if we look over here, we can see best things to do in Bali, Indonesia for families .txt. Once we run this new integration process, it's going to remove all the underscores and the .txt. If we go back over here, if I click on it here, you can see it's looking for the pattern, which is the underscore. We do a global match of yes. And the value it's searching this from is the name, which is the name of the, the file. So that's what that does. Once that's completed, the next text, text parser step, it's actually looking for the .txt in the file from the previous output from the text parser. Uh, step 33 in, in my case. So that's what that does. And then Webflow, it just grabs all the content. So our latest updated text from the parser, got the, the HTML and all the other bits and pieces we need. So once that is all done, we can then run the process and our content should post over. So we've got our you know, best things to do in Tokyo, Japan for families. So let's Press it and see what happens. So we'll run this once. And that actually works. So if we had a thousand files in there, it would have ran a thousand times. We don't need to do that to prove it. We know it works. So we'll go back over to Webflow. I'm just going to refresh this page. And we should have an extra article in here. Ah, here it is here. So I've actually posted it to the wrong directory. So I'm just going to fix that. I actually set it up here to post to the test one. You can see here I've made a mistake. It is going to say test superb sites. So I'm going to change this actually. I want this to go to blog posts. So I'm just going to change that. Now I'm going to run this again because it hasn't been run for, for that particular blog post. I don't know if this is going to work, but I'll try it. No, there's a good good lesson there. Because this, this process here has already detected that file exists, it doesn't run it again. So I'm just going to remove the file, put it back there, and then run it. So I actually had to just delete the other file out, drop it in the folder again, and rerun it. So that has just gone through and reprocessed. So now we can go over to Webflow, and we can refresh this, and hopefully we do finally see the file in the correct spot. Go to our CMS. There's 19 posts, so that's looking good. So... Best 
restaurants in Tokyo for families. It's appeared, and now we can publish it. So I'll just go to Publish, Publish on the Selected Domains, and we can take a look by clicking the link. I think we go to Destinations. This is where it's going to end up. If I scroll down, there should be one for Japan. There it is. So this is the final product in, in this example in terms of the way it's all been set up. I think it comes out really neat. And if we had every city in the world, we could produce this and it would look amazing. It would only take a couple of clicks and we would have it. So if you've got any questions or comments, drop them below. I hope you got some value. If you did, maybe like the video, subscribe to the channel and I'll catch you in the next one.